If you've ever come across a Canadian goose or gone to a Percy Jackson premiere, chances are you've had to make an escape at some point in your life. And just like CIA-backed coups, there have been no shortages of escapes throughout history. So today, we're going to cover some of the more captivating freedom flights history has to offer. Julius Caesar is widely known for being a Roman emperor loved by all, especially his friends. But what is rarely talked about are his more youthful days. Back in the good old days of the Roman Republic, pirates infested the Mediterranean. The Romans left them alone because, while, well, yes, the swashbucklers terrorized the high seas, they made up for it with all the good things they did. Like selling people. In 75 BCE, Cilician pirates captured a 25-year-old Julius Caesar. The pirates told him his ransom was 20 talents of silver. <laughs> Do, do you know who I am? <laughs> no, I'm worth 50. Men were sent to get the increased ransom, and Caesar settled into his new life of captivity. But just because you're a captive doesn't mean you have to act like one. And Julius Caesar certainly didn't. Caesar treated the pirates like they were his subjects, going as far as demanding their silence when he was trying to sleep. In his 38 days in captivity, he spent most of his time writing and reciting his poetry and speeches to the pirates. He also took part in their games, and as time went on, the pirates grew to like and respect him. However, Caesar would occasionally threaten to have them crucified once he escaped. Yahtzee. Oh, I'm gonna crucify the fuck out of you. <laughs> you Romans have the best jokes. Joe? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just joking. While the pirates thought he was pulling a funny, Caesar was a man of his word. After his ransom was paid, he raised a naval force despite holding no place in public office and captured the pirates. Before he had them crucified, however, Caesar was overcome with a sense of mercy. So, in a show of leniency, he settled for cutting their throats instead. Always the gentleman. In 1265, before Edward I became King of England, he was a prisoner of Simon de Montfort during a civil war. One day, Edward went out riding under the supervision of a company of knights, and asked if he could try out each of the horses in turn. Keep in mind, when a person of royal blood went to prison, that basically just meant living upper middle class. He proceeded to ride them one by one, testing their speed. <sighs> fantastic. So, this is the last one then? Yeah, this is Comet. He's the fastest stallion we've got. Excellent, excellent. Well, see ya. After mounting the final horse, he bade his captors farewell and rode off. The knights, with their horses too tired to give chase, just sat and watched as their captive and careers disappeared. F Out of the 928 prisoners who attempted to escape Auschwitz, only 196 would be successful. In 1942, Kazimierz Pachowski would attempt to become one of those lucky few. Pachowski knew the consequences of attempting to escape were horrendous. For every prisoner that tried, ten others were to be starved to death. But after he found out that his friend was scheduled to be killed, Pachowski decided to form a plan. He figured that if he can get not one, but an entire four-person work unit to disappear, then surely only their block supervisor would be held responsible. On a Saturday morning, they snuck through the first camp gate, stole some officer uniforms, and jacked a commandant's car. As they approached the main gate, they are greeted with a Hail Hitler by some officers as they drove past. But as they approached the final barrier, they saw that it remained shut. A few of them started to panic, but Pachowski, seeing as they were dealing with Nazis, did the only thing he could think of. Aggressively shout loudly in German. The gate opened and our daring escapees rode to freedom. Luckily, just as Pachowski planned, only his supervisor was punished for the escape. Next, we have the story of Sutomu Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi was on a business trip to Hiroshima in 1945 when the Americans decided to try out their newest toy. He was only three kilometers away when there was a great flash in the sky and he was blown over, temporarily blinded. Despite serious radiation burns and being heavily bandaged, Yamaguchi made his way home and reported to work only three days later. In Nagasaki, his supervisor was calling him mad at his description of the atomic bomb just as the Americans erased another city from existence. Apparently, it takes more than the force of 35,000 tons of TNT to do Yamaguchi in, because he survived that one too. To put that into perspective, that's about as much power as it takes to sit through an entire Percy Jackson movie without pouring bleach in your eyes. I don't know if I've made it clear how much I hate those. Just like how Shawshank Redemption had the character Red, a video on escapes isn't complete without an Irishman. So, finally, we have the story of future Irish president Eamon de Valera. In 1919, de Valera was being held in British-controlled Lincoln Prison, where he noticed a door leading to freedom in the exercise yard. He managed to get a wax impression on a candle of the key to the door, but the guards at Lincoln were thorough, so he needed to find a creative way to get the mold to his contacts. De Valera turned to a fellow prisoner who happened to be a cartoonist, and had him draw an exact replica of the key in a cartoon. The rebels outside made a key following the cartoon's diagram, which was then sent to de Valera baked inside of a cake. The any avid Looney Tunes viewer would immediately see through, 
But seeing as the cartoon wouldn't make its debut until a decade later, they were in the clear. Hey, uh, I was hoping you'd get this cake to my friend Eamon. Uh, you see, it's his um, birthday, and I just wanted to do something nice for him. It's uh, just a vanilla cake, filled with vanilla. Nothing else inside at all, just vanilla. Okie dokie, I'll get this right to him then. But the key was too small, so they sent a second cartoon a few days later. Hey, so today's Eamon's birthday, and I was just hoping you could send this chocolate filled cake to him. It's uh, filled with just chocolate, by the way. <laughs> of course, you know, just get this to him, please. Wait, weren't you just here a few days ago for his birthday? Hmm? Oh no, you must be mistaken. That was a year ago when I gave him that vanilla only cake filled with not but vanilla. Oh, well, time flies when you're having fun in prison. I'll deliver this for you. That key didn't work either, so instead of making a third, the rebels just decided to give him the tools to make the key himself. So, today's my friend Demon's birthday, and I've got this fruit cake for him. Hold up. Now, I'm pretty certain you were just here for his birthday. Huh? Oh, did I say today's Eamon's birthday? No, 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 no. I meant to say that today's Eamon's dog's birthday. Yep, yeah, I'm giving him a cake to celebrate his dog's birthday. Blimey, that's gotta be the sweetest thing I've ever- Say, what's that noise? Oh, that'll be the fruit. It's a fruit cake, and uh, you know how fruit <laughs> rattles. Well, I've got to try me some rattling fruit one day. Another prisoner made a master key for the facility, which Dave Valera used to unlock his cell door. Dave Valera, along with the two other prisoners, snuck across the yard, unlocked the door, and became the first people to ever escape from Lincoln Prison. To avoid further detection, Dave Valera dressed himself as a woman and strolled by some guards who were too busy flirting with girls to notice. Hey, good looking. You know I can do a lot more than abuse prisoners with this baton. Oh yeah? Like what? Duh, taxes, fuck, I didn't know I'd get this far. By the time Dave Valera's absence was noted, he was already miles away in Manchester, probably eating some cake. So, in conclusion, while throughout history, escapes were filled with cross-dressing, swashbuckling, plutonium-fissioning adventures, today, mentioning an escape usually refers to those popular escape rooms where teenagers having finished their 50 watch of Sherlock could approve their massive intellect to minimum wage employees. Not nah, that's